Welcome back dear students to another series of videos from learning chemistry is fun and the topic for today is osmosis and osmotic pressure. This is a very easy topic because you will be able to relate it to your knowledge of gas laws and if you don't have that knowledge still you will find it easy because many a times we are not able to recall the basics of class 11. No worries on that. We are starting from scratch and you will be able to understand this topic easily. First of all, we need to discuss two experiments that we will talk about. A very simple thing. Take a perfume bottle, spray it in your room. I have sprayed it so far from myself, but still we are able to feel the fragrance of the perfume in the other parts of the room. This phenomena is what we call as diffusion. The particles of the perfume have simply moved from one part where they were in high concentration to another part where they were in low concentration. These have simply been carried in all the directions by the particles of the air. This is what we call as diffusion. Diffusion takes place in solids, it takes place in liquids. You put a drop of ink in water, the water will turn blue, indicating that diffusion has happened. Solids also, diffusion takes place in the case of solids. Between solids and liquids, between two gases, between liquids and gases. So diffusion is, if you notice around you, diffusion is happening all the time. And it is not confined to either the solute or the solvent. Diffusion takes place involving both the solute and the solvent particles. But you cannot bring it back. You cannot reverse it. I cannot bring the particles of the oil particles of the perfume back to the bottle or back to the region where I am. I have sprayed it. So diffusion is an irreversible process. Coming to the second process. We talk about raisins, right? Why many a times you would have read about the raisin experiment. And in fact, I have got students asking many a times, what is a raisin? So raisins is nothing but dried grapes that we have. Now these raisins, we will put in a bowl of water. It's a simple experiment. I'm using simple things which are easily available at home. I have put it in a bowl of water. We shall observe the condition of the raisins after some time. Now by experience some of you would be knowing that these raisins will swell up after some time. Why and how does that happen? This can be explained by a phenomenon what we call as osmosis. The water molecules from the bowl move into the raisin. Why does this movement happen? Here the major play hovers around concentration. In the raisin there is sugar. There is water outside. Water moves into this raisin through its wall. This wall is allowing only the solvent particles or the particles of the water molecule to enter it. Hence, it swells up. This type of a membrane which is allowing only the solvent particles to move through it is what we call as a semi-permeable membrane. So water has moved from a region where it is in high concentration. I am talking about water molecules. Where water molecules are in high concentration to a region where they are in low concentration. Here also the solvent is water. Here it is only pure water. So the movement of solvent particles from a region of their high concentration to a region of their low concentration. Their high concentration to their low concentration through a semi-permeable membrane is what we call as osmosis. Now, you must be wondering, we have al always read movement of particles from a region of low concentration to a region of high concentration whereas this teacher is teaching something totally different. No, I mean the same thing. Here, 
I can alternately give this definition as movement of particle of solvent particles from a region of low concentration to a region of high concentration. If you notice, I did not use the word there. I am not talking about a solution where the concentration of water molecules is low. I am talking about a solution where the concentration is low. In other words, it is a dilute solution. Here the concentration of salt at present when we are talking about this experiment is nil. So, the concentration in terms of molarity, the concentration of this solution is low whereas the concentration of this solution is high. So, movement of solvent particles from a region of low concentration to a region of high concentration through a semi-permeable membrane is what we call as osmosis. Both the definitions mean the same thing. It's just an interplay of words that we are doing. Here we are saying the solvent particles are moving from a region where they are in high concentration to a region where they are in low concentration. So, so osmosis can take place only in the case of solutions. It is involving only solvent particles and the best part is we can reverse it. Let's see how. We have set up a simple experiment. Here we have got water in a drop of water in a glass drop. We have got a thistle funnel, a glass thistle funnel so that we can see the movement of the liquid in it and we have got a salt solution or sugar solution you can add sugar solution into it. Basically your solute should be non-volatile. So we add sugar solution to it and the important thing over here is since we are demonstrating osmosis, what kind of membrane do you talk about here? It's a semi-permeable membrane that can be natural, that can be artificial, anything. So you use a semi-permeable membrane over here. Mark the initial level of the water in the thistle funnel stem. Leave the experiment for some time. Come back to it. We notice that the level of the solution in this has risen. Why has this happened is there is water over here semi-permeable membrane and there is the con solution over here, a concentrated solution, a more concentrated solution. So water moves from the trough into the thistle funnel causing a rise in the amount of solution in the thistle funnel. What if I want to stop this process? Here because water molecules are moving into it, there is some pressure being exerted apply a little pressure over here. When we apply a little pressure over here, we notice that a point is reached where that pressure is just enough to counter the process of osmosis. It prevents the process of osmosis from taking place. That process is called as osmotic pressure and we represent it by the symbol pi, which you use in mathematics as well. We represent it by the symbol pi. It's a form of pressure. Now, before we go on to the derivation of formula, let me explain to you that we are talking about dilute solutions over here. We are not talking about variations. We are talking about basic, basic levels of understanding. We are talking about dilute solutions which are known to behave like gases. This we had done under Henry's law as well. So we know that according to Boyle's law, pressure is inversely proportional to volume for a gas. So Van Hoff extended this concept to osmotic pressure and he said that the osmotic pressure is inversely proportional to that volume of the solution which contains one mole of solute. Now, every time you are not adding just one mole of solute, that solute could have any concentration. So, in other words, it comes out to pi is directly proportional to molarity because molarity is the number of moles of solute in one liter of solution. 
This is called Boyle's Van Hoff law because it's an extension of Boyle's law. So osmotic pressure is directly proportional to the concentration of the solute in the solution or the number of particles of the non-volatile solute in the solution. We also know that pressure is directly proportional to absolute temperature. Absolute temperature means temperature in the Kelvin scale. So what do you do is you have temperature in degree Celsius you add 273 to it and you get temperature in Kelvin. So, osmotic pressure is directly proportional to absolute temperature. Now, all these have been experimentally proved, but for the purpose of your study, you just have to see the derivations. You don't have to prove it experimentally. So, don't bother too much. I would say you concentrate on the basic understanding first, but don't limit yourself to it, but get a firm foundation. Now, pi is proportional to molarity into absolute temperature. We said that dilute solutions behave like gases. So, removing the proportionality constant by a constant called as the universal gas constant or the solution constant. So, pi is equals to MRT that is molarity into universal gas constant into temperature. Many a times you will come across the expression pi is equals to CRT. It is the same, this is, they are talking about the same thing, except that we express molarity as capital M, whereas your concentration is expressed as C. We can also modify this because molarity is number of moles of solute divided by volume of solution in liters into RT. So our expression becomes pi V is equals to NRT. This is another formula. So you have one here and another formula over here. The application of this formula is very easy. You have to concentrate on the units that you are using depending upon the gas constant unit you are using. For this I will uh, give another video or a write-up so that you are able to understand the application of this formula. So coming to the basics, pi V is equals to nRT. This is another formula. In other words, you notice here as well as over here, pi osmotic pressure is directly proportional to the number of moles of the non-volatile solute present in the solution. It is very, very important that we talk about the non-volatile solute. So, num osmotic pressure is directly proportional to the number of moles of the non-volatile solute present in the solution. Hence, we say it is a colligative property, a property which is dependent on the number of solute particles in the solution is a colligative property. What if I apply a little more pressure? You know that we have applied pressure in order to stop the process of osmosis from taking place. What if we apply a slightly greater pressure? What do you think will happen? Yes, we will be able to cause the water molecules to leave the thistle funnel and move out into the trough of water. So what is happening over here? It's exactly the reverse of osmosis, right? And that is what we call as reverse osmosis. That means when pressure greater than the osmotic pressure is applied on to the concentrated solution so that solvent particles move from concentrated to dilute solution. That means in the reverse direction. That Then it is called as reverse osmosis. You heard about ROs. That's what you connect at home in order to get pure drinking water. ROs are nothing but based on this principle. In countries where uh, clean water is not available and they have to extract water from sea water, this is the principle which is used in order to get clear water or clean water from sea water. This it applies the principle of 
reverse osmosis. So osmosis and reverse osmosis are important observations, important phenomena which govern our day-to-day -day life. Coming to the reasons, at the end of this we notice that the reasons have slightly become bigger in size. If I leave it longer, it will be even bigger but I am sure we don't want to hold you for that long. Please see a write-up on this on the site Learning Chemistry is Fun and I would be happy if you can leave your feedback on this video so I can improve myself. Thank you so much for watching.